Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, the 16th of March. I was struck in the reading from morning prayer this morning, uh, uh, Jeremiah, from the, the way in which the, the prophet Jeremiah is told by God to stand at the uh, eastern gate, more than likely the people's gate, and to declare a prophetic message. And the prophetic message is a warning from God uh, to say that the people had been neglecting the Sabbath laws. They were, in the examples that Jeremiah gave from God, they were carrying loads through the gates of the city. And by carrying loads, what I believe was being told to them was that they were still working. The Sabbath, you see, was a day of rest, absolute rest. And yet the people were carrying loads. They were working in order to earn income, perhaps, or to satisfy a commitment made to someone else. And they were not satisfying the commitment made to God. Now, what's interesting here is that the Sabbath laws were not invented by the religious leaders themselves. It was a sign given by God, a rule given by God, which was to be a sign of the covenant between God and his people. Because I find as a human being, often when I look at rules, I try and understand why are they there? What's the logical consequence of it? If I'm simply told something, and I don't understand why, I can't help but question. Now, there might be valid merit in doing that to a human-made law. So if the government says you may not smoke, I don't smoke, so it wasn't a big issue for me. But what was the logic behind that? And of course, there were as many logical answers as there are people who gave some thought to that. Or you may not do this, or you may not do that. A human law perhaps can be challenged, cautiously and carefully and respectfully. But here's the question, do we challenge, do we have the right to challenge a law given by God? If we trust that God is all-knowing and all-powerful and everywhere all at once, then we must consider the fact that God is just and is always just. And when the laws of God do change, it's because God has given us the right to move forward. And so here was the Sabbath command, do no work, and the people were breaking that. And God was getting upset and warning the people that there would be a consequence. The city would be destroyed. But if they obeyed, then the city would live forever and the kings of David, the, the line of David would continue forever. And that got me thinking. How does this relate to you and me today? Because in a sense, those Sabbath laws have been superseded by other laws from God in the New Testament. But the one law which I believe is from God is that we nevertheless set aside a day in the week in which we go and seek corporate worship together of God. And yet how many people actually do that? Having been a minister and standing out and looking at the congregation on a Sunday morning and I realized that but a small percentage of the people are actually represented in church and often it'll be mom and the kids and dads at home as the one dad would say to me he was on bungalow duty quite what that meant I don't know but for him it meant that he had absolute carte blanche to choose when to come to church or not to come to church do we do we honestly have that right Another person told me that when he comes to church, he's doing God a favor and I should be very pleased. And when he doesn't come to church, I should not even bat an eyelid and worry about it. Well, again, I wonder how that argument would go down when you're standing face to face with God himself. And he says to you, where were you on that Sunday, last Sunday? Would bungalow duty or um, I felt I didn't need to do you a favor, God? Um, would that really hold much weight in that court before God himself? And so we need to consider seriously, if the rule is from God, do we, do we have the right to break it? Do we have the right to question it? Can we um, amend the rules ourselves? And that's quite a big question. And thinking of uh, corporate worship on a Sunday is one example. Another 
very prickly one that people do not like us talking about, but it is a direct command of God, is of course that of the tithe, of giving back to God 10% of what God has given to us. How many of us tithe our income, tithe our time, tithe our talents to the glory of God? So folks, something to think about. A uh, bit of a heavy one, perhaps, at the start of the week. But have a wonderful day, and God willing, we'll chat again tomorrow. Bye-bye.